Hello everyone, so I've thrown my hat into the ring for the UK Smash Off 2019. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a competition uh, that's run for uh, Smash Beers and this year's theme is the Brexit Brew Off, so basically the rules are you've got to use uh, ingredients, either all from the UK or European ingredients. Uh, thought it would just be a bit of fun. Um, and also because it's kind of peer judged so everyone gets sent back beers from the other brewers to judge uh, it's a good opportunity to um, get to taste lots of different kind of single malt and hop uh, combinations so uh, it should be quite useful in that sense as well for trying out some different ingredients and and so on anyway so i'm going to use this video just to uh, do the kind of brew day and stuff for that and tasting of the beer um, and find out later on hopefully how it gets on in the competition so let's get on with some brewing right so we're about two weeks into February and the competition the beers need to be done by the beginning of April uh, 1st of April I think is the deadline for it so it's a relatively quick turnaround for these beers so um, the limit on ABV is 5% anyway so it wasn't going to be anything particularly strong or uh, obviously not a complex beer because it's um, a smash but you know within those rules still you could be quite creative using different um, base malts and yeasts and hops and so on to do something a bit different but I thought I'd go quite simple with my choice of beer and basically just focus on the kind of ingredient quality and uh, method, hopefully, to get something decent. I've also based it loosely on a, um, a beer that I've already made previously and just simplified the recipe down. So one of the um, lager brews that I did using the uh, global yeast in a video before, I think, I put, I've got, I think I've got a link to that I'll put up on the um, screen. Uh, so Saphir Hops, um, Vehement Floor Malted Pilsner, so I've got the the best sort of lager malt that I could for it and um, global yeast as well so a decent uh, liquid lager yeast as well. Let's have a little look at the recipe now so uh, in more detail so it's basically 3.9 kilos of Pilsner malt, the Vehement Pilsner malt, uh, 40 grams of Saphir at 60 minutes, 28 grams of Saphir at 30 minutes, another 28 at flame out and then a dry hop with 34 grams so it's obviously a European, I've gone for the European style ingredients with this one and um, it's basically going to be a Pilsner so uh thought it would be something that would be kind of you know fairly uh, you know universally appealing there's not many people who don't like a, a really nice uh, hoppy Pilsner and um, yeah this one's kind of like I said loosely based on the clone recipe for uh, Pivo Pils which is a Firestone Walker beer from the US uh, so it's not the exact recipe I've done before but I have done very similar and uh, it's quite reliable so we're looking at 1049 specific gravity should get down to about 10 10 10 11 which will give us 5% 34 IBUs again there was a limit in the competition I think for 35 IBUs maximum um, so I've just gone through pretty much as close to that as I can it will be a very pale beer because it's only got the pills and the malt in it, so it should be about 6 EBC on the colour. And yeah, that's about it. So not much else to say really about the recipe there. It's a smash beer, so it's nice and simple. going to call it Smashing Pills. And um, let's uh, show you some brew day footage.
Okay, so time for the big reveal. This has been in the keg for just over a month now. And I posted off 10 of these that I bottled up the other day. So this is the beer that people will be receiving. Or hopefully in a similar condition to this. Okay, so what do I think about it? Uh, appearance wise, really happy. As you can see, that has dropped absolutely bright as a button. Um, yeah, you can't really get any clearer than that. There's no haze on it at all, um, which is good for you know the sort of lager style that I was going for. There's no findings in it, honestly. This was all time, lagering, um, just low temperature getting as cold as possible in the keys, a good cold crash before it went into the keg. Um, yeah, so no findings, as per the rules, um, after fermentation. Uh, colour, lovely light straw colour, so as you expect with a beer just made with Pilsner malt, it's um, about as light as you can get with a beer, unless you're uh, adding other adjuncts and things into it. Um, but it's a lovely kind of straw, light straw colour. Um, nice sort of tight fluffy white head on the top which seems to be hanging about at the moment so yeah it looks really good uh, in my opinion um, hopefully you think the same and uh, I've been drinking it for a while I know you know and I'm pretty pleased with how it's tasting but let's have a little sample now and see what I think so aroma wise it's uh, it's not exactly packing a punch on the aroma to be honest there's a little hint of um, you know that kind of lagery yeast character, but very faint. Um, just a slightly kind of zesty herbal note there, maybe, and um, yeah, a little bit of malt, but it's very, very subdued kind of uh, aromatics on there. Um, yeah, hard to really pick anything out on that front. So it's not winning any awards on the uh, smell test, but uh, flavour's the all-important thing. So let's see what we've got to say about that. I mean, it does what I was expecting it to, really. It's just a nice, um, clean, pretty crisp kind of Pilsner-style lager. Um, there's a bit of bitterness there, but it could maybe do with a slight, slightly higher kick of bitterness for it to be more in line with the kind of German Pilsner style, which I guess it is closest to that category with it being all German Pils malt and Saphir hops, which are also German. Uh, 35 IBU limit is in the right sort of region for this, but I think, especially with a lot of homebrew beers, you probably don't quite get the IBUs that are targeted in the software, and this seems like it's maybe just a touch low for a Pilsner style, but maybe that's just my, um, my taste for that sort of beer. Uh, in terms of flavour from the other stuff, we're uh, getting quite a bit off of the hops. So they do have a nice um, kind of soft, spicy sort of herbal note to them, as you get with a lot of noble hops. But there's also, again, coming back to that slight aroma I've got, there's a bit of a sort of zesty character to it. So almost like a um, lemon or lime zest, kind of slightly bitter, um, zesty, kind of tang to it which is quite nice very subtle so it's not um you know not anything like you would expect from an american you know sea hop like cascade or something like that but it's just enough to add it a little bit of interest in there and uh yeah make it very drinkable indeed as far as i'm concerned now is it going to do all right in the competition hopefully people will like it i don't think it's likely to um you know, do that well to be honest because uh, having tasted it now, I'm kind of thinking it's not really got enough wow factor to it. I think it's a nice beer, uh, it's clean. I'd like to think it's quite well made. We'll see what other people think about it, but um, it's not quite got enough pizzazz, I don't think, to really do well um, in the competition. But I guess that's the big challenge of doing smash beers that are really exciting because you have such a limited palette of ingredients. So um, not necessarily a problem as such to make a good beer, but to make a really exciting beer. 
probably you need to uh, do something a little bit more creative maybe than what, what I've got here. But we'll see, fingers crossed, you never know. I think it does have, um, or it should have a fairly, uh, you know, wide appeal to people because it's, uh, you know, a nice, drinkable, refreshing lager. Um, if people are judging it on a weekend when we get a bit of hot weather, I might do a bit better as well, but we'll see. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's in the post now. Hopefully it gets there, because otherwise I won't be getting judged at all, but um, we shall see. So, yeah, uh, looking forward to tasting all the other people's beers, and if anyone out there gets one of these, I hope you do enjoy it, uh, you know, and uh, mark it honestly as well, because uh, this is all about getting feedback from other brewers. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully at the end of the video I'll be able to tag some results on the end because I won't be able to post this video until the competition has kind of concluded or at least the um, first round beers have been judged. So hopefully there'll be some results at the end of this. I might come back for a little bit of comment depending on how I get on. Uh, but that's it for now, so cheers. Right, so the results are in. Uh, my beer came third in its group, so I just missed out on getting it through to the final round of judging. So I'm still pretty pleased with that, to be honest. Um, somebody worked out an average of all the scores across the four groups and uh, it didn't fare quite so well in that table so it was uh, solidly in midfield on that one but yeah I'll uh, I'll take that anyway so pretty pleased with that um, congratulations to the guys who did get through to the final round and uh, best of luck to all of you uh, there were some really good beers um, that I judged and it looked like there were some really good beers in the other groups as well so um, yeah, I think a few things learned there probably for this competition and also maybe uh, other competitions going forwards. Um, I think definitely judging by the other beers that did quite well, a lot of them had um, yeast that were a little bit more characterful in them. So I think there was quite a lot of uh, beers using kind of Saison and uh, Belgian yeast and things like that so that were really kind of adding a bit more flavour to the beers that did well. So I think particularly for a smash off competition i think looking at your uh, yeast choice is probably quite important and maybe um yeah going with a sort of pilsner style beer with a very clean kind of neutral lager yeast maybe wasn't the uh, the best choice but having said that it still did quite well with that so you know maybe if i did uh, go for something a little bit more exciting yeast wise it might have just pushed it up a bit who knows um but that seemed to be a bit of a theme with them also, I think looking at uh, some of the pictures and videos of my beer, it didn't necessarily uh, seem to arrive in quite the same kind of condition uh, appearance-wise as it uh, did earlier in the video when I showed you me pouring it straight off the keg. Um, Clarity-wise, not sure why that was. So maybe it was just a bit of chill haze or perhaps some sediment got kicked up when I was uh, bottling um, off the keg. So I have to move the keyser around to do that. So that might have been um, part of it. The other thing was the carbonation. It didn't really look like it had quite as much uh, sort of carbonation or head on it as well. So um, I think when you're using those screw top bottles, maybe it's a good idea to, uh, particularly when you're bottling off the keg, just carb it a little bit higher than um, what you would normally before you put it into the bottles to make sure it gets a bit physical. I think it loses a bit of the carbonation during the transfer to the bottles and um, you know probably during transit as well. So. Uh, a couple of things there that might change uh, for next time if I do it again. Um, there is, uh, I'm doing some other smash beers this year for other uh, competitions. There's one at the Bedford Home Brewers, so certainly picked up a few um, extra pointers for that. Um, but overall, it was just a really fun uh, competition to be involved in. Got to drink some really nice beers and uh, looking forward to seeing how the rest of the competition goes. So again, thank you to uh, David Lucas for organising. Thank you to all the... Uh, guys who organised the hubs and got all the beers sent out. It all went really smoothly, um, surprisingly so. In fact, I was, I was really impressed with how quickly everything got turned around. And uh, yeah, so if you do it again next year, I will definitely be getting involved. Um, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, like I said, good luck in the competition to those of you who are still in. Cheers. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino.